Hi everyone, Pam Van Nest here, and it's Friday. Flowing Friday, because things are going to flow right into the weekend. And I wanted to ask you a question. How's, how's your self-care going? I was talking with a client this morning, and she was sharing that this summer, the last couple of weeks, she's been really focusing on her self-care, taking care of yourself. Well, what does that mean? Well, I thought I would share a little reflective practice that I would like to do on Fridays with you. And it has to do with categories of our self-care, and I've defined six of them. There's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and relational. Those are the six. And then I've got some essential actions that can go with them to help you reflect on each category. And then I've got what I call elements of agency. They're tools that you can use, ways to help improve that self-care. So I have these cards now. I'm going to show you on this way. There are the self-care, there's the essential actions, and then there's elements of agency for Instagram, because I'm doing this really experimentally. Here we go, on this side of the camera. Oh, maybe I can't do that. There I can, yep. Just so you can. Categories of self-care, essential actions, and elements of agency, okay. So what we're gonna do today is I have them random. I don't know which one I'm going to choose, but the first one today is mental self-care, okay. Mental self-care. I know it's written backwards, but anyway. Our mental self-care, what does that mean? First of all, well, our mental state, our mind. How is your mind? There's a thing called mental and emotional fitness. Mental fitness is when we can deal with things that happen that are challenging, and we can stay more positive than negative because our brains are wired to go to the negativity and go to the fear. But mental fitness is being able to recognize that and then put in place some positivity. So your mental self-care, how do you take care of your mind? How do you take care of your mind? It's like the story of the two wolves that we have inside of us, the wolf of fear and the wolf of love that our indigenous people, uh, the Cherokee nation, that story gave us. And the answer is it depends on what you feed it. So what do you feed your mind? Do you feed it positivity, empathy, care? Or do you watch the news channel all the time, nonstop? What kind of material do you read? What kind of people do you hang out with? So our mental self-care. And when something is is bothering us in our minds, do you go get help? Or do you just try to slog through it? Also recognizing that sometimes our brains, our minds, don't always tell us the absolute truth. It's often skewed. So anyway, so that's what you're going to focus on today. Mental self-care. And this is reflective. So I'm going to invite you to jot this down in a notebook and then take some time today or maybe over the weekend and just kind of think about it. Okay, so essential actions. Here I have the cards. I'm going to shuffle them. And our essential action is, here we go up here, admit. Okay, here we are. Admit. Admit. What does that mean? Admit. It means bringing something to the surface, being honest even if it's just with ourselves, admit. So if we put those two together, what, what needs admitting? That's, that's one, one uh, possibility for admit. What do you need to be honest about with your own mental self-care? Now, admit also means to allow in. Ah, it's an action. What do you want to allow in to your mind that's going to help and nurture your self-care of your mind? 
open questions and I'll be thinking of these also. And then the third thing is elements of agency. Okay, tool. And the one I chose, oh, empathy. One of my favorites, empathy. Empathy, that state of being where we can imagine how someone else is feeling without taking that feeling on ourselves. I love putting um, compassion in front of it, compassionate empathy, doing what we can lovingly, but not taking on someone's feelings, uh, but knowing how they feel and wanting to help them. And then what does that look like in our own self-care? What is self-empathy? We could have a whole week talking about that. What is self-empathy? How are you empathetic, compassionately empathetic to yourself? Or are your saboteurs grinding away, accusing your judge, jury, and executioner in that in your mind? What Let's put these two words together, admit and empathy. How can you admit, let in some empathy for yourself and your mind? How can you let it in and what will it do? What's that going to look like? So anyway, this is going to be short and sweet. And I will do it along with you. And I may pop in later on in the middle of the week, because a week is a long time to go. Um, and just check in and see, I might share some of my insights, because every time I do this, I get new insights. If you want to know more about this um, little card game that I have, I call it Compassionate Possibilities. You can direct message me in Instagram and in Facebook, and I can tell you more about it. But I, I just wanted to share this um, being a coach, being a, a former teacher, I used to love to make games so that my students would be able to remember whatever it is we were learning and make it fun. And I have carried that on in, in my coaching and trying to make coaching games. And a game can be can be competitive, it can be collaborative. I think of this as collaborating collaborating with you, I'm collaborating with you, you are collaborating with me. And, uh, and then we're also collaborating with all that wisdom within ourselves. So that's it for Flowing Friday. And I will, I might see you in the middle of next week, but for sure on next Friday. Let me know what you think. Put the comments in the, wherever they are on Instagram or on Facebook. And um, yeah, thanks for letting me try this little experiment. Bye for now.